The Memphis Grizzlies. The team situated in Memphis, Tennessee have become one of the more popular teams in the NBA recently, especially with the emergence of their young star Ja Morant and their promising core. Not only that, last year they had an amazing season, finishing second in the West with a record of 56-26 and, and losing in the playoffs to the eventual champions, the Golden State Warriors. It's widely accepted that Memphis is one of the brightest futures in the NBA and are currently one of the better teams in the West, even without their big man Jaron Jackson Jr. So the question is, how did a team that started in a completely different country even get to this point? Let's break it down. The Memphis Grizzlies actually started off as the Vancouver Grizzlies. In the year of 1994, David Cern and the NBA decided, after a very successful beginning of the 90s, to try and expand the NBA audience to Canada. They did so by deciding to add two expansion teams, the Toronto Raptors, which we know how that went. There's a new NBA champion, and it's a team from Toronto, Canada. We the North are now we the champions, the Raptors, the 2019 NBA champs. And the other team? the Vancouver Grizzlies. Vancouver had historically been a very popular city for travel, as well as a major area for filmmaking. Owners and fans were optimistic about the creation of the Grizzlies, and hoped that the fourth most densely populated city in North America could become a great basketball town. But as you can probably guess by the title of this video, things didn't exactly go to plan. The Vancouver Grizzlies were arguably the worst franchise in history. In their first two seasons alone, they went a shocking 29 and 135. But their main problem was they couldn't get any better. This was for a number of reasons, but the main one in my opinion was their horrible draft choices and their just general bad luck in the draft. And it all started in their very first year. In their very first NBA draft, they were assigned the sixth overall pick meaning they missed out on Kevin Garnett by one pick, and they ended up drafting Bryant Reeves. Who you ask? Exactly. He averaged less than 10 points his entire career. No surprise, in their first season, they didn't do very well, only winning 15 games. However, this put them in a great position for the famous 1996 NBA draft, and they even got the third overall pick in the lottery they decided to draft Sharif Abdul-Rahim, and although he was a fairly good player in the NBA, they passed on, wait for it, Stefan Marbury, Ray Allen, Antoine Walker, Kobe Bryant, Peja Stojakovic, Steve Nash, Jermaine O'Neal, and Ilgauskas. A grand total of nine All-Stars, six All-NBA players, and three Hall of Famers. Once again, their draft pick didn't help them at all, and in the 1996-1997 season, they won just 14 games. I think it's important to preface that the Grizzlies also got very unlucky with the draft classes they had to pick from. A lot of the classes in the late 90s were notoriously very bad, including this next one, the 1997 draft class. They ended up getting the fourth pick in this notoriously bad draft, yet they still passed on eventual Hall of Famer Tracy McGrady. Ironically, he went to the other Canadian expansion team. Nothing really changed in this next season. The Grizzlies were still one of the worst teams in the league, but they did have their highest draft pick to date, the second overall pick in a fairly decent 1998 draft. They would go on to select fairly decent point guard Mike, Mike Bibby. Bibby but they passed on players such as Antoine Jameson, Vince Carter, who went to the Raptors, Dirk Nowitzki, and Paul Pierce. No surprise, the Grizzlies once again were horrible, the worst they'd ever been actually, finishing the 98-99 season with a horrific record of only 8 wins to 46 losses. But maybe the Grizzlies would actually draft someone good, maybe even franchise changing. Did they? Yes, actually. They selected Steve Francis with the second pick of the draft, a young, explosive, all-star level point guard to lead the franchise into the future. Well, he refused to play. I'm not joking. I do not want to play in Vancouver. Saying he didn't want to move to Vancouver, so the Grizzlies had to trade him and once again they were left with no promising young players going into the next season. 
As you can imagine, the 1999-2000 season was more of the same for the Grizzlies. They finished as one of the worst teams in the league and got the second pick in the NBA draft again. Unfortunately, the 2000 draft is genuinely the worst draft class in history. It had one all-star, that's it. So their pick of Stromal Swift, the man who never scored more than 12 points in an NBA game, didn't exactly change much. To no surprise, the Grizzlies didn't improve, and in the 2000-2001 season, they were once again one of the worst teams in the league. And this brings us to the end of the struggle era in Vancouver. In the six years the Grizzlies were there, they finished with 101 wins and 359 losses. No playoff appearances, zero all-star selections, a couple of bad draft picks, and the lowest average home game attendance. Safe to say they were the worst franchise in NBA history. At the same time, the Toronto Raptors enjoyed success on the court from 1999 all the way to 2002 making the playoffs each of these three seasons. Vince Carter evolved into a superstar during that time, being selected to six straight All-Star games for Toronto. Although the era in Vancouver was bad for the Grizzlies, the next one would be a much, much better one. Before we move on to the next era, make sure to like and subscribe if you want more videos like this. In the summer of 2001, the Grizzlies relocated to their current home, the city of Memphis, Tennessee. And as I mentioned, due to the fact that they finished the 2000-2001 season with a record of 23-59, they had a high chance of getting the first pick. They would eventually have to settle for the third pick, but for once they had actually pulled off the best pick of the draft, selecting future Hall of Famer Pau Gasol from Spain. Gasol would lead the city of Memphis and their new franchise into the future. Averaging 17-9 on 50% from the field, a fantastic rookie season, winning Rookie of the Year in the process. Memphis was still a young bad team, so they would finish the season 28th out of 29th and would once again be in the lottery. But they would trade this pick that year to the Magic for their sharpshooter Mike Miller. The Grizzlies' young team continued to develop, but they were still bad and finished the 2002-2003 season with a slightly better record of 28-54. Coming into the 2004 season, no one really expected much more from the Grizzlies, but they would end up doubling their wins to a record of 50-32. and 32. This was due to a combination of trading for James Posey and Bonzi Wells, both of whom averaged more than 12 points, and more great play from Pau Gasol, who led the team in both points and blocks. Their coach would go on to win Coach of the Year, but they would get beat in the first round, but by the defending champions, the San Antonio Spurs. This was the beginning of the Grizzlies becoming a solid playoff team. They made the playoffs once again the very next season, after finishing with a great record of 48-34, and, and even rebranded how we all know them today. However, they did get knocked out in the first round again. But the city was happy, the franchise was making money, and this was a huge improvement from where they were in the 90s. The 2005-06 season was great for the Grizzlies. They finished 5th in the West, marking their third straight year of making the playoffs, and Pau Gasol made his first ever All-Star game, averaging 20 points, 9 boards, 5 assists, and 2 blocks. They would lose the eventual finalists, the Dallas Mavericks, in the playoffs. Pau unfortunately missed half of the 2006-07 season due to an injury he got at the FIBA World Championships. Due to this, the Grizzlies blew up their team and they would finish the season out of the playoffs with a record of 22-60. In that draft, they would get the fourth pick and make another great decision in drafting now Memphis legend Mike Conley. Due to the team being younger and slowly being rebuilt, in the 2007-08 season, they would start it really bad and decide to call it quits and trade Pau Gasol to the Lakers for his rookie younger brother Mark Gasol. This officially signalled the end of the era of Pau in Memphis. In the eight seasons Pau was in Memphis, the Grizzlies became a solidified playoff team, making the postseason three times in a row, as well as making their first ever franchise all-star appearance in Pau Gasol. This was a huge improvement for the Grizzlies, and allowed them to grow as a team and fan base tremendously. However, the trading of Pau marked the beginning of the next era in Grizzlies basketball one of the most notorious eras in 2010 NBA history. The Grit and Grind Grizzlies 
The following two seasons after Powell's trade were ones of rebuilding for Memphis, but after a few questionable draft picks. The Memphis Grizzlies select Hashim Thabit. The Grizzlies eventually decided to make a move to be better and would trade for Zach Randolph at the beginning of the 2009-10 season, and the grit and grind era in Memphis officially began. Marc Gasol and Conley had began to play at a much higher level and Randolph was the perfect third guy to complement the young duo, and the Grizzlies really showed what they were capable of. They really hung their hat on defence and were in contention for the playoffs all year long, and just narrowly missed the postseason, finishing the season as the 10th seed with a record of 40-42. and 42. Despite this, Zach Randolph really showed that the Grizzlies made the right choice in trading for him, as he would make the All-Star game while averaging 21 points and 12 rebounds a game. Going into the 2010-11 season, there was a huge amount of enthusiasm surrounding the team as it was their 10th season in Memphis and they made some great moves, such as trading for good wing Shane Battier and backup point guard Ish Smith, as well as signing Tony Allen on a 3 year deal. Rudy Gay would also play amazingly, averaging 20 points a game on good shooting. But Zebo was the star of the show, he was the epitome of grit and grind, he hustled on every play imaginable and would average 20 points and 12 rebounds a game on his way to his first ever All-NBA selection, the first in Grizzly history as well. Mike Conley and Marc Gasol would also continue to improve, and Tony Allen was becoming one of the best perimeter defenders the league had seen. Due to all of this, even despite Rudy Gay getting injured 50 games into the season, the Grizzlies would finish as the 8th seed, with a record of 46-36, and 36. but what they would go on to do in the playoffs was unimaginable. April 17th, 2011 Game 1 against the first seed 61-win San Antonio Spurs the Grizzlies would come out and make a statement. The game went back and forth as the Memphis Big Three all contributed greatly. However, the Grizzlies would find themselves down by four with only a minute remaining. Marc Gasol would score a layup making it a two point game, then following a defensive stop, Mike Conley would take up the ball with just 35 seconds left before finding the man they traded for, Shane Battier, for a huge contested three to take the lead. The Grizzlies would close out the game 101-98, and just like that, the 8th seed Gritting Grind Grizzlies had beaten the number 1 seed. However, this series was only getting started. The Spurs would win a very close game 2, 93-87, but now they had to come to Memphis. In game 3, the Memphis crowd was deafening, and the Grizzlies defense smothered the Spurs all night long. It came down to a tied game of 88-88 with just 40 seconds remaining, before Zach Randolph would hit a huge free in Tim Duncan's face to take them up by three. Tony Allen would then prevent the Spurs from even getting a shot off and the Grizzlies would win the game 91-88 and take the 2-1 series lead. By the time the Spurs had to play in Memphis again in game four, the Grizzlies had already beat them mentally and they would blow the Spurs out beating the Spurs 104-86 to take a commanding 3-1 series lead. Despite the Spurs beating the Grizzlies by 7 in Game 5 to make it a 3-2 series, Zach Randolph would leave no doubt in Grizzlies fans' minds in Game 6. He would have a historic night, dropping 31-11 on 50% from the field, leading the Grizzlies to their first ever playoff series win. But even more impressively, he led an 8th seed to beat a 1st seed, only the fourth time in NBA history it had ever happened. Not some fluky first seed either, this was the San Antonio Spurs. The next round was an absolute dogfight of a seven game series, with game four going to a triple overtime, which a Westbrook 40 point game would lead to an OKC win. Unfortunately, despite Memphis's best efforts, Westbrook averaging 25, 5 and 5 and KD averaging 26 was just too much for the Grizzlies to handle, and the OKC Thunder would win the series in 7 games. This season was a huge success for the Grizzlies though, and the postseason really cemented the new core in Memphis of Zach Randolph, Marc Gasol, Mike Conley and Tony Allen. And for the first time in Grizzly history, the fans had something to genuinely be excited about. Coming into the 2011-12 season, the Grizzlies extended Marcus Gasol and Memphis started off great, finishing the season with a record of 41-25, enough for the 4th seed. 
However, Zebo would very unfortunately tear his MCL and miss a huge amount of the second part of the season. Gasol would pick up the load and make his first ever All-Star game, but when Zebo came back in time for the playoffs, he struggled and so did the Grizzlies, and they would lose in the first round to a Chris Paul-led Clippers in a close seven-game series. Despite the first round exit in the 2012 season, the 2012-13 season was nothing short of incredible. This was the team that made me a fan of basketball, and even made me ask my parents for my first ever jersey, a Mark Gasol one. The Grizzlies came out of the gates flying, starting 12-2 with great team efforts across the board. This team was so elite defensively, it was a joke. They held opponents to under 90 points per game for the season, which hasn't even been done since, and all of Tony Allen, Mike Conley, and Marc Gasol made all defensive teams, with Marc Gasol really coming into his own as a star, winning Defensive Player of the Year. Even if LeBron should have won it, but that's a story for another video. The team had brilliant production from their starters across the board, and this led to them finishing with their best ever record of 56 and 26, enough for the fifth seed in an incredibly competitive Western Conference. Entering the playoffs, the Grizzlies had a chance for redemption, as they were facing off against the same Clippers team that beat them the year prior. And things actually didn't start off well, with the Clippers winning both home games and taking a 2-0 series lead. However, in Game 3, Zach Randolph would once again lead the Grizzlies to a win, dropping 27-11, and this was the turning point in the series. The Grizzlies would blow out the Clippers in the next three games and win the series in Game 6, after Zebo and Conley both had 23. Moving into the second round, the Grizzlies once again got a chance of redemption, facing the OKC Thunder team that beat them in the second round back in 2011. However, things would go a bit differently this time, due to a bad knee injury to Russell Westbrook caused by a certain man that would rule him out the rest of the playoffs. Despite this, KD would put up 35, 15 and 6 in Game 1 in a win for OKC. However, following this, the Grizzlies were just too much for an injured OKC team, and although the games were close, the Grizzlies, led by stellar series performances by the Big Three, would win the series in five games, and the Memphis Grizzlies advanced to the Western Conference Finals. This was just insane. A team that was considered beyond repair just a decade before this had reached the Western Conference Finals, beating two great teams in the process. This is why fans of the Grizzlies have so much love for these four men, and the grit and grind era in general. They just defied the odds for them over and over again. Unfortunately, in the Western Conference Finals, the Grizzlies were up against one of the best teams of the 2010s, and a team that was on the brink of beating the Big Free Heat in back-to-back -back finals if it wasn't for Ray Allen's shot in Game 6. So although they fought hard, the Spurs were just on another level from all the other teams in the West, and they would sweep the Grizzlies. And for me, this is kind of where the grit and grind era begins to end. Although there were another two good seasons from this core, from this point onwards, Tony Allen and Zebo unfortunately did not look the same anymore. However, let's move on to the next season. The Grizzlies really struggled to begin the 2013-14 season, starting 14-18 with Marcus Gasol injured, and they would enter the All-Star break with a record of 29-23. But they would go 21-9 after this, and would finish 7th in the Western Conference with a record of 50-32. This included a 14-game winning streak at home. They would face the OKC Thunder in the playoffs, and had a record 4 straight overtimes from games 2 to 5 and they would go 3-1 in these overtimes, but the Grizzlies ultimately fell 3-4. Despite an effort by Gasol in Game 7, they didn't have Zach Randolph after he was suspended for punching Thunder Center Steven Adams in Game 6, so once again they were knocked out of the first round in the playoffs. In the 2014-15 season, this is where Marc Gasol and Mike Conley really began to take over as the clear 1-2 and two options, and for the most part it worked. Gasol thrived in this larger role and made a second All-Star game, averaging 17 points, 7 boards, 4 assists and 2 blocks a game. The Grizzlies would end up as the 5th seed, with a great record of 55-27, and, and in the first round would face the Blazers led by Damian Lillard. 
However, the Blazers had no answer for Marc Gasol, as he averaged 21, 9, 5 and 2.5 on his way to leading the Grizzlies to a 4-1 series win and advancement to the second round. Unfortunately for them, the league MVP and the first year of a dynasty was waiting for them. They fought hard and even had a 2-1 series lead, but the MVP Steph Curry was just too much and the Grizzlies lost in 6 to the eventual NBA champions. The 2015-16 season, the team was plagued with injuries, with none of Gasol, Conley or Randolph being able to play even 60 games. This led to them finishing the season with a record of 42-40, and, and as the 7th seed before being swept in the first round by the 67-win Spurs team. Moving into the 2016-17 season, there was no chance for any team in the league if your name wasn't the Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant. But Marcus Gasol did make another All-Star game, averaging great numbers, and Mike Conley had his best season yet. The two of them with declining players around them led the Grizzlies to a 43-39 record, before losing to the Spurs in the first round in six games. However, Game 4 was an amazing duel between Mike Conley and Kawhi Leonard, where they had 43 and 35 respectfully in an overtime classic. If you haven't seen it, honestly, go watch it. Despite this, the Grizzlies were out of the playoffs and in that offseason, Zach Randolph decided to sign with the Kings and Tony Allen signed with the Pelicans and that was officially the end of the grit and grind era, the most memorable and successful in Memphis basketball history, for now. In the grit and grind era, the Grizzlies had four All-Star appearances, a Defensive Player of the Year, an All-NBA appearance, and they made the playoffs seven times in a row, including four playoff series wins. This is why the grit and grind era is looked at so fondly by Memphis fans. Just an amazing era. In the 2017 draft, they did make the most of the situation by drafting good role player Dylan Brooks with the 45th pick in the second round. In the 2017-18 season, the Grizzlies announced that Zach Randolph and Tony Allen jerseys would be retired, showing love to the grit and grind era. Conley was injured for a large point of the season, and the Grizzlies were very bad, and clearly were rebuilding at this point. They would finish the season 22-60 and, and would get the 4th pick in the draft, and they would draft defensive monster Jaron Jackson Jr. with the 4th overall pick, a vital role in the next era. In the 2018-19 season, they were slightly better, but they were still bad and rebuilding. They would trade Marc Gasol after 11 years with the franchise, and he would actually go on to play a major role in helping the Toronto Raptors to win the 2019 championship. This trade confirmed the official start of the rebuild for the Grizzlies. They finished the season with a record of 33-49, and but the best part of the season would be the draft lottery, where the Grizzlies got incredibly lucky. The Grizzlies were forecasted to have the 8th overall pick, but they jumped all the way to 2nd overall, and they would draft future superstar John ja Morant, and this was the beginning of the Morant era in Memphis. In the 2019-20 season, they were much better just missing the playoffs at the same time as rebuilding, finishing for 35-39 record. The Grizzlies would also trade Mike Conley after his 12-year stint to the Utah Jazz. Ja Moran had a fantastic rookie year, averaging 18-7 on 47% from the field, winning Rookie of the Year in the process. They would miss the playoffs, but they would make another fantastic decision in the 2020 draft, selecting future member of their core, Desmond Bain with the 30th overall pick. In the 2020-21 season, the team was much younger and were a better team. However, Jaron Jackson Jr. was injured for the majority of the season and it would finish as the 9th seed with a record of 38-34. and However, this was the first year of the new play-in system, meaning that the 9th seed had a chance to make the playoffs still, and Ja Morant really showed how elite he was in these play-in games. After beating the Spurs, Ja Morant and the Grizzlies had to play the Warriors, led by MVP candidate Steph Curry. Ja would outplay the Hall of Famer, scoring 35-6-6 six six in an overtime win to secure the Grizzlies a spot in the playoffs, as well as eliminating the Warriors. In the first round, the Grizzlies would face the Utah Jazz, and although they lost in 5 games, it was a very close series, and Ja went ballistic and showed he can play at an elite level at the highest level, averaging 30 points and 8 assists a game on 49% shooting from the field. In the 2021 draft, they would make more great additions, and in the offseason they would decide to trade Jill and Valianchunas for Steven Adams. And this brings us to last season, the 2021-2022 season. 
it would be their best season for years, and Ja Morant took the biggest jump possible, becoming an All-NBA and All-Star in just his third year. Ja would average 27, 6 and 7 on 49% shooting from the field, and would lead the Grizzlies to their highest ever seeding of the second seed in the West, with a franchise tying record of 56 and 26. They would face the Timberwolves in the first round of the playoffs, and Ja would have some incredible performances in the clutch, and would even have a game winning shot, leading the Grizzlies to win the series in 6. In the second round, the Grizzlies would face the future champions, the Golden State Warriors, and actually put up a very good fight, with Ja dropping 47 on them, as well as beating them by 39 points in Game 5. However, Ja would get injured and the Warriors would win the series in 6, before going on to win the championship. And this takes us to current day, the 2022-23 season. Ja has continued to play at an All-NBA level, and Desmond Bain, who I mentioned earlier, has made an All-Star level jump, averaging 25-5-5 while shooting 45% from free. Jaron Jackson Jr. is about to play consistent basketball again, and the Grizzlies look primed and ready to make another run. And there we have it, the rise of the Grizzlies, all the way from Vancouver, Canada in the 90s to Memphis, Tennessee in 2022. Could the Grizzlies compete for a title this year? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and make sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date with my newest videos. Also want to say thank you so much for the support on my IT documentary. To get 40k views in less than two weeks on my fifth ever video has blown me away. So thank you, and until next time, bye.